Amateur television has come a long way since these photos were taken. The advances in electronics have taken us from the TV Stone Age to the Jet Age and beyond. The heart of the digital system is the modulator. They are used to feed media via cable to numerous displays situated in shopping centres, hotels, entertainment venues, etc. This block diagram shows the process of upconverting our digital signal to the 23 centimetre amateur band. Looking at these components in turn, we start with the camera. Older model digital camcorders can be found online for reasonable prices, but because we use the HDMI output, it's desirable to be able to turn off the menu icons. The local oscillator needs to be in the VHF UHF frequency range and can be crystal controlled or any stable frequency source. Synthesizers using the ADF4351 device are ideal. The one shown holds its frequency when powered down. Other ones with push button frequency selection are cheaper but they don't hold their frequency. The ADL5801 mixer has the job of taking the output of the local oscillator and adding it to the modulator output frequency to produce the sum of the two. The choice of local oscillator and modulator frequency is to not make it the same as any strong local transmission but to sum the desired output frequency. The mixing process not only results in the wanted output frequency but other undesired frequencies that should be filtered out. This is the three pole bandpass filter that, that I've made and we'll leave a link below to the video showing its easy construction. You could use a saw filter but I haven't tried one. The output from the modulators is typically 0 dBm which is not sufficient to drive a final power amplifier. Shown are preamplifiers that have quarter watt output. Suitable other ones are available online. Mitsubishi RF modules have been very popular for many years such as the one shown but they have stopped making them. One RF module available on eBay can be used on 23 centimeters with a small modification. A chip capacitor needs to be re relocated but it's not difficult. A link is included below with the instructions. Very little power is needed with digital ATV to cover considerable distances. I've used a Blair House model HD1090 encoder modulator which produces up to plus 6 dBm output in 0.1 dB steps. It has a good range of menu options such as bandwidth, constellation, code rate, guard interval etc. I set it up on the breadboard first to test all the components together. This is the final setup with the local oscillator in the center, the mixer below that, band pass filter to the right, the 5 volt buck converter and PA driver above and the power amp module with heatsink at the rear. This is the transmitter mounted in the rack and a side view showing the ventilation holes on all four sides. I was originally going to flush mount it but reconsidered for better cooling. These are the settings that you need to enter into the modulator. The bandwidth. Match it to what your commercial TV channels use, 7M in Australia. The constellation choice. For amateur TV, use either QPSK or 16QAM. Code rate versus forward error correction. 7 8 gives the highest bit rate but a lower error correction. Three quarters is a good compromise. The guard interval is to reduce the effect of signal reflections. Longer intervals have more effect on ghosting. 1 16th is a typical setting. Transmission mode make it 8K. RF frequency select to avoid any local strong transmissions and the RF output level set to not raise the skirts excessively. DVB-T is more difficult to amplify than other digital TV standards. 
it's important not to raise the side skirts of the signal too high as this will create unwanted emissions. The waveform you see here is quite acceptable. The drive has been increased from minus 2 to 0 dBm. The side skirts have increased in height but are still acceptable. The drive is now at plus 3 dBm and at this level the skirt height is too high and undesirable. I was planning to demonstrate how this module could be used to view the digital RF output waveform but unfortunately the displayed waveforms are inaccurate and misleading. These RTL SDR devices are another way of viewing the waveform by using the waterfall display. You can't see the whole waveform as they only have one megahertz bandwidth but you can see the side skirts at each end which is useful for setting the acceptable RF output. Once you have your digital system up and running it's worth considering some nice accessories such as the Blackmagic ATEM mini vision switches. There are models from 4 to 8 inputs where media can be used in conjunction for chroma keying, titles, etc. Also available is free software such as vMix and Open Broadcast Studio that do a nice job of tying it all together.